In this episode, we're under pressure to meet the looming land clearance deadline. The regulations are strict, our plot is very large, and coping on our own seems overwhelming. We therefore take a look over the land to explain why we've called in some help to prune the olive and fruit trees. We move some of the driveway materials out of the way of our parking spot and dispose of the mountains of excess debris. If you're new to the channel, we're Jane and Phil, semi-retired Brits who are embracing the adventure of restoring a two-acre abandoned farm in central Portugal. This week, we wanted to share how getting the right equipment has helped us to make dramatic changes to our land over the last six months or so. If we flash back to when we first saw the property last September, the whole site looked sad, overgrown and neglected. The trees, especially the olive and fruit trees, were in a pretty sorry state. The plum tree by the house is a perfect example. It had grown to the point where the branches were resting on the house roof. Knowing this was a priority, Phil bought his first ever chainsaw, a battery-powered DeWalt. So I got stuck in with it, full of hope, optimism rather than talent. I started with some of the smaller bush clearance jobs where it was quite light and manoeuvrable and cut through some of the smaller branches quite well. I even got carried away and had a go at some of the bigger stuff like the lower branches on the plum tree. But I think Phil would be the first to admit it was hard going. Inexperience, poor technique and limited understanding of basics like regular chain sharpening held him back. That being said, this is the first olive tree he tackled. Pretty brutal, we thought at the time, but fast forward to today, it's now healthy and happy. When the DeWalt got wet and stopped working for a while, it was time to step up to a proper machine. It was much better than before, and we got some more olive pruning done, but it reminded us of a basic fact that underlies this project. We're not 25 anymore, and can't do everything just because we think we can or at the necessary speed. It was time to wheel in the professionals so we could watch how it should be done and maybe pick up some hints along the way. <laughs> that looks so different. More light. <laughs> we have more light now. Yeah. Not more light. No energy, more light. <laughs> Just look at this over by the wall. Oh. It's also open now. It's so much different. Can I allow you to walk the plank? Yes, please. One hour, one tank of fuel. So first thing, let's get some coffee on. This is the setup for the outdoor kitchen. So we've got 
the long term one is over there but the short term one that one's going to be going into use when we get a roof over it this one we've had to put the awning up which has been sort of successful not perfect but good enough got some deck boards across here and a shelf up there so we've got all the stuff ready accessible washing up bowl is a standard washing up bowl with the drainer next to it got the camping gas two ring burner bit wet on the top that's why I close it up overnight because it gets dew or some rain if it does rain but um, that works jolly well we use some spring water so first, let's get some coffee on first thing is some spring water which we get from the spring up the road All the coffee and stuff under cover, all of them in waterproof containers. And there we go. So what else have we got around here? So knife block, utensils, the filtered water for, for drinking. So that's the spring water it goes to a, a water filter block uh, unit there. Down here, pots, pans, plates, and mugs. Down from the bottom, but that'll do. You know, it's all self, pretty much self-contained. Here's the utility, this is where we've got the fridge. Some milk. So all in, it's pretty good. It's very dependent on the weather, of course, and not quite so much fun when it's, when it's chucking it down with rain. I was a bit worried about it this morning, but so far so good. And fingers crossed for a brighter day. It was very showery yesterday, but uh, Fingers crossed for a better one today. This is what we had delivered yesterday. It's called Podopedra, which is, I think, translates as stone dust. And it's a sort of granular stuff. It's coarser than sharp sand. It's cheaper than sharp sand as well. And apparently it sort of hardens off with with age and wear and is recommended very good for for pathways and the like so the trouble is the delivery driver had a bit of a problem or challenge a with the narrowness of the entrance b with the state of the soft entryway given that it had rained heavily the night before and see the uh, low hanging branches of one of our oak trees guarding the entrance so all he could do was reverse in through side, side tip it right there however this is the challenge it does make getting out of the driveway a little bit of a difficulty that's a tight turn, so I'm probably going to have to wheelbarrow away a good lump of that. So I might as well start putting it into the trench if I can get over the driveway area with the wheelbarrow if it's, if it's firm enough. Let's see. That'll do.
very cloudy morning this morning, which uh, is very chilly too, quite unexpected really, but it's fire day and you've seen us do loads of fires so I'm not going to bore you with the, uh, with the process, but in the best traditions of before and after, this is a quick walk down the slope so you can see the before. We've got wood and wood and wood and cuttings and stuff. There's a lot to get through today. <clears throat> so without any further ado, it's time to try and find some dry wood and see if I can get this thing rolling. Something to be mindful now, now that we've cleared away most of the cut, newly cut stuff from the olive trees. On the floor, down in the old part of the wood, there's a few bits of dead trees that have fallen. And really, they've got to be cleared as well. Some of this stuff is so dry. It makes wonderful kindling for the barbecue and for getting the fire started, but can't really leave it on the wood floor, woodland floor. So this has got to be dragged up as well. Part of clearing. And you can see now the, the woodland floor is a lot clearer. There's a lot more sense to it. Still need to strim or mow the grass piece at the bottom, but that's for another day. As for today, clearing the wood, burning what we can't keep for fuel or firewood and stashing the rest in piles so that we can chop it up and use it in the winter. And as promised, the end of day after video relating to the bonfires. And you can remember all the piles of stuff that was here. All of it's gone. I say all of it. I've kept back some stuff which will be good for fuel. We'll chop that and put that in the barn. That'll do good for the winter fuel. So I'll pile it out there. Another pile there, but as we come down, we have had a number of different fire pits because we've decided to do different pits near to the accumulation of, of materials. So there's one there, damped down and nicely out. Come down further underneath the old olive tree that was so badly swallowed up by the ivy. And um, we've got another one there. That's pretty much done. I'll give that another spray down with the hose in a moment. And then all that was through here, now missing, dealt with. And we can see the wall around the well once more. So you may recall there was Three, there are three olive trees. One up there, one over there, and one here. And they've all been scalped. And this area was just a mass of cuttings. Similarly, the one up by the side of the main house, that's been dealt with as well. That was all down here. And if I come back across the moat, the third of the fires just dying down. 
That was a heavy day. How are you feeling after all that, Janie? Absolutely pooped. <laughs> <laughs> well, no two words for it, really. But the oh, it's been a long day, but uh, incredible to have got through it all. So, uh, oh, very very happy to see nice clear land. And then, last but not least, there's a little fire going to go on. A little bit of charcoal into there. That's the baby barbecue on which we'll cook some dorada for supper. Lovely. Land clearance is critically important at this time of the year for fire safety, so Phil got stuck in scrubbing the top terrace. Unfortunately, that's only about a quarter of the whole of the plot. Down in the lower areas, we've done less. There's more land and big areas of canes and self-seeded bushes to remove. Time to call the guys in again, this time with some heavy duty strimmers. Yes, that's the noise you can hear in the background. Do a trench dump. I can do the shoveling, but I certainly can't do the back. So this is going into the yeah. into the trench. Okay. Yeah. Said, isn't it? Yeah. Find a hole.
see the full effect of what the guys did, let's go down to the lower terrace and walk back up. It's lovely to be able to step over the freshly cut grass under the trees. Really couldn't do that before. The clean cut lines of the well really stand out now. I can see that there's lots of potential here to make a feature out of this. For me, this week was a timely reminder that I have to be a bit more selective about what I can take on. There are times to roll my sleeves up and get stuck in, and times to recognise it's just not smart and bring in the specialists, but still minded to self-sufficiency to learn as much as possible from them in the process. Having watched and talked to the guys this week, my understanding of pruning is way better than it was, but still limited, both in what to do and how to do it. Take a look at these for example. They've left us with the classic wine glass shape and cut them down to a level I can work with next year. What I noticed was I was cutting from the outside in with the ladder at a low height but still cutting above shoulder height. Their approach where possible was to climb high into the tree and cut from the top down and from the inside out. Not for a man of my age and flexibility I must say. I can see how the wine glass shape comes easier from that method though. I also picked up some very useful tips on chainsaw maintenance and use and they'll be so useful next year. They also reassured me how resilient fruit trees can be, as illustrated by Stumpy here. It was crowded out by the nearby orange tree, but now with both cut back hard I can see them flourishing again and coexisting. That's it for this week, thanks for watching and we hope you'll join us again soon.